In this lesson, we'll cover caustics. Make sure that you have the caustics file open here in SketchUp. And if you take a look around, you'll see that you have a rectangle on the ground and then this black object. The black object is actually a vase with a glass material applied to it. Caustics are a phenomena where you have a bright light that shines at an object and the object will reflect and refract light in a fashion that splits the light up or splits the light photons up, producing an uneven or glittering light effect. In this example, we'll set up a V-ray light that will be shining at this vase, and then we'll see how we can use caustics so that the reflected and refracted light shows that effect. It turns out that the spotlight in V-ray is a great light for producing caustics. So go ahead and click on that icon, and then you'll want to navigate in your scene to where you can see these guidelines. There's a construction point here where the two guidelines intersect, and that's the one we're going to use for the placement of our light. We're going to place the light in a different way than we have before. So make sure that you've selected that tool, hold down your shift key, and click once at that construction point. Then you can let go of your shift key. By holding the shift key down, you were able to place the light, but now your cursor is live and active for a line of sight for the light or a target for the light to point at. What we'll do is orbit so we can see underneath. We're still in the middle of positioning this light and hover your cursor on the origin. Go ahead and click there. Now you still have more to do, so orbit back to the top. And now when you move your cursor up or down, you're determining the cone angle. Go ahead and move your cursor so that the radius completely encapsulates the vase, something like what you see here on my screen, and click. Then you still have one more parameter to set. So continue now to move your mouse, and this is for the penumbra angle. Go ahead and move it to something like what you see here on my screen and click. Now you've set up your spotlight. Go ahead and click on the render camera scene and let's open up the V-Ray Asset Editor. You'll notice if you click on the Light tab that you have a Spot Caustics and a Spot Caustics number one. If anything about what we just did didn't work for you, you can enable the Spot Caustics that was already there and disable yours. But if yours was successful, we'll be using the one that you just set up. So with that one selected, go ahead and click on the Flyout menu. So we'll have a few things we need to do. One, we need to make sure the intensity of the light is bright enough so that the caustics will work. In this example, let's set it a little bit brighter. We'll go to 45 and hit enter. Another thing here, for the cone angle and the penumbra angle, just make sure that your cone angle is greater than one. So here, mine is just a little bit below. So I'll slide this a little bit to the right. Let's also set the shadow radius to one and then click on the options menu. And you'll see there that you have caustic photons. Go ahead and click on that menu item. And here it says caustic subdivs. The subdivisions of the caustic effect will ultimately govern how crisp or blurry the effect looks. The higher the number, the longer it will take to render. In this case, we want to see the effect more quickly. So let's set this value down to 200 and hit enter. Okay, so we have a light that's well set up to produce caustics but we still need to make sure that the material on the vase is also set to produce the caustics. Go ahead and click on the Materials tab, and you'll see here that we have a glass material. With the flyout menu open, you'll see the V-Ray BRDF material, and underneath, you can see that there is a reflection, so we can have reflected caustics, and you'll see that there is refraction, so we can have refracted caustics. If you scroll down, under Refraction, you'll see the option for Effect Shadows. Let's go ahead and uncheck that. This option is useful when you're not enabling caustics and you want to get something that gives the appearance of them, but it's really a less accurate caustic-like effect. So instead, we'll uncheck it. And then underneath where it says Affect Channels, flip this menu down, and we want it to affect all channels. Now that we've disabled the Affect Shadows, we can actually use caustics to get a more accurate result. Okay, so we have a light that's going to work for caustics and we have a material that's set up to produce caustics, but we still need to enable caustics. And that's over in the settings tab. You'll see that over to the right, we have a caustics menu item. Go ahead and click to open that up and you'll need to enable it. So click on this switch here to turn the caustics on. There are a few options below that we'll cover in just a moment, but we have everything in place to get a preview render of what this will look like. So go ahead and click render. You'll see in the render that there's this shadow, but I don't see any caustics shining through here. Let's go ahead and check the render element here. Click on RGB color and switch to caustics, and it's completely black. At first, I might think that the caustics haven't rendered at all. Let's go ahead and click here, though, to show our color corrections. 
we'll check on the exposure and flip this menu down and let's set the exposure to something pretty high, something like 10 and hit enter. And sure enough, we see that the caustics are there. It's just that they're not very bright. So the exposure is helping us see some of the refracted caustics and the reflected ones. But we can't set the exposure like that and have the normal image work out well. So how do we fix this? Well, first let's switch this back to zero, uncheck exposure, and we'll close this up. We'll flip back to the RGB color and let's come back over to the asset editor. And in the settings tab under the caustics menu option, you see here there's a multiplier. So we can multiply the caustics to brighten them up without having to expose the whole image too bright. Now you could play around with this value, but I happen to know that something way up at 2000 will work pretty well. The other three options here, while you can play with them, and you can certainly hover over them with your mouse cursor to get extra information about what they do, but the default values tend to work really well. So we'll use those here again. Now let's go ahead and click render. And you can see the result here now. We can actually see the refracted and reflected caustics. Let's go ahead and save this to the history. So we'll click on history and we'll click save. Now if you flip this menu down back to caustics, you can see here that the caustics are quite blurry. So what can we do to sharpen those up? Let's go back over to the V-Ray Asset Editor, back to the Lights tab. And for our spotlight, remember that we had set the caustic subdivisions lower to get a faster render. Here's how we sharpen them up. Let's just switch this back to the default value of 1000. Hit enter and let's go ahead and re-render. You can see here in the finished render now we have much sharper caustics. To compare these let's go ahead and save this image and then we can set up an AB comparison here and you can slide that back and forth to see how that impacted things. With more caustic subdivisions, you'll have noticed that your render took a little longer to get started. And that's because it took longer for the photon map to be created for the caustics. But once you've done it, for example, we've rendered with the 1000 subdivisions, you can save that photon map so that future renders happen faster. Here's how to do that. Back over in the asset editor, click on the settings tab, and you see just beneath caustics here, you have disk caching. Go ahead and click on that. And you see the mode here says new map and to the right says save. Go ahead and click the save button and this will be your caustics map. Save it somewhere that you remember and go ahead and click save. Now, let's say that you wanted each new render to take advantage of the saved photon map for the caustics where it says mode, click on new map and go down to from file. And let's go ahead and select the one that we just saved. Once you've done that, let's hit render to see how much faster the render starts. So we notice that that render started much more quickly and also finished much more quickly due to using that save map. Just keep in mind that if you change anything about the lighting, using a save photon map doesn't work anymore because it won't be accurate.